Hello there. Today I have a special guest, uh, Dominic from Germany, who promotes uh, the German language, uh, calls it Get Germanized. So we're going to get Germanized and we're going to find out a little bit more about Dominic. Hello. Good evening, Dominic. Good evening. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Uh, yeah, my name is... Uh, Guten Abend. Very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure Deutsch you speak German. Ich spreche keine Rolle. English, Deutsch. But we'll stay in English. We'll stay in English um, for our viewers. All right, all right, all right. So, well, my name is Dominik Hanekom. Um, I come yeah, from Germany, as Steve has mentioned, from the uh, state of Lower Saxony or Niedersachsen. And I have been on YouTube making videos about the German language or learning languages and German culture since basically 2006. Mm -hmm. um, professionally, I've started it in 2013. After um, doing my bachelor's thesis at the university, I noticed this could become well, more than just a hobby, and uh, I've always been passionate about p helping people, uh, learning and, um, well, empowering people to better themselves in, in any way possible. So that's what I'm trying to do with my channel um, and to uh, make it a little bit entertaining as well. Because language, I mean, for some people, it looks very, um, well, scary sometimes because of the difficult grammar and all the uh, processes in, uh, that are involved with learning a new language. And I just want to take away that fear a little bit and make it fun, uh, if possible. Uh, I, I told Steve this before. I uh, don't see myself necessarily as um, a grammar teacher or something like that that can really go in depth, but a facilitator of language that keeps or that it gets people motivated to learn it and keeps them interested in it, hopefully at least. You know, it's interesting when it comes to grammar, and some people think of German, you know, separated verbs and der, dem, die, des, whatever, and they get intimidated. Certainly, that was my <laughs> experience. It was only when I stopped doing yeah. it that I could learn the language. But uh, if a person is motivated, you know, I, I always think we had a dog when our kids were young. And if he was chasing whatever, a cat, like he would go through the bramble bush. He'd come out the other side bleeding. It didn't matter. He wanted to get that cat, you know? And if you can motivate yeah. people to learn German or Chinese, people will learn the characters in Chinese. People will learn the grammar in German if they're motivated. So I think you're on the right track. If you can motivate people, they'll deal with these other issues. Now, one other thing. So we're talking motivation. So I know a lot of people are motivated by German rock music, music, Rammstein and so forth. I'm not at all motivated <laughs> oh, yes. that way. Zero. Zero. I wouldn't know Rammstein from uh, Rumpelstiltskin. But <laughs> when you say Lower Saxony, then I think of, I don't know where that is, except that is that near Leipzig? Is that near Bach country? Is that, what? has it anything to do, is that sort of north of, of uh, Bohemia, of the Czech Republic. Uh, where, uh, tell us where Lower Saxony is. Lower Saxony is in the north of Germany. Oh. Uh, Leipzig is about five hours uh, from where I live. Actually, I'm going there this Friday because okay. I was about to go to the Leipzig Book Fair, mm -hmm. the, which was canceled oh, yeah. because of the Corona Very scare sure, at the yeah. moment. But I'm still just going to go there and explore the city. But yeah, uh, in the north of Germany, um, the capital city here is Hanover. Okay, Actually, you might have so heard of lower, Hanover. like I always look at a map, you know, Germany, north, south, mm. uh, north is upper. And, uh, and, uh, but in fact, it is no, confusing it's, sometimes. it's the reverse. So I guess it's Lower Saxony is north of Saxony, uh, you know, yes. Leipzig and Dresden and so forth. Okay. Uh, now, how, what, uh, so, I mean, I'm an old uh, fuddy-duddy, so I'm more into older <laughs> things. Uh, Don't say that. <laughs> older things. Uh, and to me, I, I can tell you what, what I found attractive uh, <coughs> with German and uh, the whole German experience, including my travels there. But let me ask you, what are the, the kinds of things either that have motivated people to learn German or that you use to motivate people to learn German? Well, um, I have asked this question actually um, a couple of times uh, and my viewers have said so far that uh, many of them have been influenced, as you uh, said, by Rammstein, by music, um, because Rammstein is internationally uh, famous and popular and so I understand and it's kind of funny because the first thing some people will write is like, Du, du hast, <laughs> you have like the song by Rammstein or it. some <laughs> other lyrics and I believe the band, the German band Tokyo Hotel is internationally famous as well and they were for a time at least uh, getting people to learn German, which I think is fantastic, mm -hmm. like uh, to me it doesn't really matter what motivates someone to learn the language as long as they have something that 
interest them because right. I, I strongly believe that if you don't learn about something in the language that really interests you, then it is very much harder to uh, keep yourself Absolutely. motivated and, and stay learning. Um, and other than that, definitely German TV shows. Mm -hmm. uh, people always tell me how they like, um, what was it, Dark, this new Netflix mystery oh, okay. show. And people just started learning or getting interested in the German culture because of shows like this. Can we stop or, for a second? Uh, Very interesting. Netflix. Oh, yeah, sure. Netflix. Okay. Netflix mm. is a major source of language learning content. Um, oh, for sure. I, I used it for Turkish for a while. Uh, oh. I even found an Arabic uh, series there, but it was in Egyptian Arabic and I couldn't understand a word. But <laughs> so there are a lot of German series on Netflix. And I think there's even a thing called learning languages with Netflix, where you can go through frame by frame and, and look at the subtitles, say, in German. And, oh, really? Uh, yes, I didn't know that. That's you amazing. Can import. We, we can bring uh, Netflix movies into Link. And I did that and I brought, you can also import the dialogue as a lesson. So Netflix oh, cool. is part of this whole world of content that's out there. And if I were learning German, I'd be all over Netflix. Um, absolutely. Although, you, uh, what is your opinion? How good can you start with Netflix? Or, or do you have to ramp up to where you can make use of Netflix or TV series as a learning material? Well, well, I mean, Mm, difficult to say because I am mm, I don't I just speak English and German fluently mm -hmm. so it's hard for me but um, when I learned English I motivated myself also with TV shows or actually to be precise uh, Japanese animation and it had English subtitles right. all the time and every time uh, I wanted to know a story plot or what was going on and I didn't know a word in the subtitles I just looked it up uh, at a dictionary or something like that so I believe if people have like a basic understanding at least um, then learning vocabulary with stuff like this with Netflix and, and movies is very good at least for me it was right. um, but but I believe there should be a, a little bit of a basis maybe otherwise you don't understand anything but what do you think well, about that actually me, I'm curious yeah if I take my experience with Russian for example uh, mm. fairly early in my Russian learning I, uh, I found a bookstore in Vancouver where they sold uh, you know Russian movie DVDs so I bought some of these, but it was more stimulus because like, you know, here, wow, look at me, I'm watching a Russian, and this is especially the old Soviet movies that were better than the more recent Russian movies. And you know, something from the 19th century. And, and I, I found this stuff very motivating, but I couldn't use it mm. as learning material because I didn't understand, I couldn't read the Russian script. I could read the English subtitles and then enjoy the movie, but it wasn't a language learning experience. So I, I do believe you have to get to a, a sort of an intermediate level However, you know, depends. I mean, if, if you're going, you know, English to French or English to German, there, there's 30, 40% of the words there that you can recognize. So it may yeah. be easier. But with Russian, I found that I, I had to ramp up with other learning activities and then I could start enjoying movies. But it certainly is motivating. There's no question. It's, mo it's the romance. It's the romance of Germany. So let's talk a bit about the romance of Germany. So, okay, we got rock sure. music, we got Netflix. How about, what are some of the other reasons why people learn German? Um, yeah, uh, talking about romance, well, yeah. for romance, for love, right. um, <clears throat> many people these days get to know their, um, their special someone through the internet and it's becoming more and more normal. I think it is pretty normal by now. And um, that way, uh, this, well, getting to know people from other countries has become very easy uh, because of the internet. And, and so many people have found someone and want to learn their language, as a, for example, Germany, mm -hmm. uh, or German uh, in this case. And uh, they come here, they live here and learn the language basically and the motivation is their partner mm -hmm. uh, which makes a lot of sense yes. because that is one of the greatest motivations I believe that you can have now, can to it, learn can a it language for someone way? you love. Can it go the other way? I want to learn this language so I'll go <coughs> and find a, an emotional <laughs> romantic partner then when I lose interest oh, yeah, in that I guess. language I'll go find another partner for the new language that I'm learning. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, now that you are saying that, I, I won't name any names, but I think you might know this person as well. I have uh, met um, another polyglot right. uh, at, 
uh, at a language um, event in Berlin last year and he told me actually that um, he does that sometimes. He, he keeps around people uh, that speak certain languages, basically flatmates and uh, I guess right. maybe girlfriends as well. I'm not 100% sure. But that was super interesting mm. to me. Like I was always wondering how, how do polyglots that speak a lot of languages keep the language fresh? And I guess that is one of the ways you can do it. So Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I think... A, because I, I happen to be happily married, that um, the, <laughs> the option of going out and finding girlfriends <laughs> in each of my languages is not, is not an option. And uh, with 20 languages, you can't constantly be looking for people who speak those languages. So it ends up being yeah. a more a matter of, of refreshing them occasionally through lots of listening and reading and those kinds of things. Uh, I also wanted to say that, uh, you know, Germany, uh, a little bit about my experience with German, and Germany is a wonderful place to visit. And you sometimes hear people say, well, I went to Germany and I spoke in German and they answered in English and it's very discouraging and stuff. And that might be <laughs> that true happens, yeah. in a department store in Berlin or in Hamburg or in uh, you know Munich. But one of the more, I mean, charming places to visit in Germany is the small towns. And you stay in a small oh, inn and it's, I don't know what it is now, but it used to be very cheap. The meals were cheap, it was um, very cozy. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on where, but right. yeah, yeah, cheaper, definitely. And you stay in these towns that are just like, like they're so beautiful, like they're postcard perfect little towns. And I can remember <laughs> I stayed many times, I had business dealings not too far from Dinkelsbühl. Uh, if you know. Ah, Dinkelsbühl, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a romantic town. And, and there the people don't speak so much English. And so there's no difficulty in speaking German. And so you're kind of able to put yourself into this German medieval German town and speak German and there's even little bookstores there and so I think there's ample opportunity and people in Germany are very friendly there's sometimes this thing that the Germans are very strict and severe and oh you <laughs> do muss <laughs> ah. not the case the people are actually very friendly and if you're driving around in the gas stations and in the inns and stuff so it's it's a it's a very pleasant place to visit and if you want to use your German in my opinion be a little strategic don't go into places where people are busy and uh, sure. they hear you stumble in German they're going to answer in English because uh, but if you go to the smaller yeah. towns uh, you can have a very nice romantic German experience at least that's been my experience well, I'm really happy that you think that. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I always hope that people have a good time coming here. And when when they say that, uh, oh, they only speak to me in English because they, they want to help me, I also understand that, I guess. But many Germans also are very keen on just practicing their English, as you say, as you said, in uh, bigger cities. And when it's a hectic situation, mm -hmm. it's just faster for them than help the other person necessarily. But also, yes, in smaller villages or towns, you will have uh, all the opportunity you want, even though uh, the younger folk there will speak English as well. So if you want to switch to English, that's most of the time no problem. Right. Uh, I, I feel at least. Yeah, and, and besides which, those people, if you meet a German person, uh, say a young person in a small town, uh, they found someone to speak to in English. So uh, yeah. they want to speak English. So why does your right to speak German trump their right to speak English, you know? Neither one of you is a teacher, so you, you got to work those things out. Um, That's one other one thing I'm curious about too is like, what are some of the so what is what are some of the messaging uh, that you give your followers, either when it comes to uh, why they should uh, learn German or about how better to learn German, and and what are some of the tricks about dealing with German, and you know the the long convoluted sentences with long phrases and relative clauses and separated verbs and what sort of advice do you give them? <laughs> Well, first of all, I guess um, why they should learn German or why they should learn any second language is just because it makes you a lot more em empathetic. How do you say yeah, that? How you said yeah, it in English? Yeah, empathetic um, towards other cultures, mm -hmm. and it gives you so many opportunities. If you learn another language, you—I mean, that's why yeah. I learned English because I didn't just want to be confined to my own country, to the possibilities within my own country. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now if I didn't learn a second language. And I traveled and felt comfortable in other countries because I knew English. Um, because, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's just super helpful in so many areas of your life and 
well, when it comes to tips on how no, but to if learn I could just better. You there. So that's English, but no, English okay. is an international <coughs> language. You know? So what's the what's the oh, motiva yeah. motivation for learning German, which really only works <laughs> in you know this this uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland uh, area. Well, um, there's many job opportunities mm -hmm. for people who want to become, for example, engineers, as stereotypical as that is, it is true, um, or just in other uh, areas of, of, uh, of jobs, mm -hmm. you can, of course, uh, use German as well here. Or if, um, hmm, well, that is a difficult question to answer now that I'm thinking about it, but I think that is definitely one of the areas <laughs> that helps. I mean, I, uh, people, I, I, I have there, never... are, there are lots of places where German is, is a very important language, certainly neighbor, oh, yeah, neighboring yeah, it's countries, not just German, Poland, German. Uh, uh, you know, sure. Croatia, Italy, even uh, France, uh, it's, a, it's a major European language, so I didn't want to be facetious, but oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> Um, well, and it always depends on the person. Maybe right. they have um, ancestors from Germany and that's uh, and they, they're interested in, in their culture and maybe they want to visit one day and then, of course, you can get along with just speaking English, but speaking German will come across as being interested in the culture and the people and just uh, as polite as well in a way. And, and it, we it don't makes, necessarily... It, it makes for such a, a much more pleasant experience visiting when you can oh, yeah. read the newspaper, you turn on the TV, Hopefully you don't turn on CNN, you turn on German TV, <laughs> you get this whole feeling of being in the country. So, yeah, absolutely. True. I definitely agree. That's why, actually, you motivated me to pick up learning Japanese again, because oh. uh, I, I studied it a tiny bit at university. But uh, just your mere existence that you know so many languages, I felt very inadequate. And so oh, I started well, learning Japanese go again. For it. You're young. And, Okay, uh, quickly, and I want to get on this oh, question. Yeah. So, what do you? How do you deal sure. with the difficulties that the German people perceive German as having long, convoluted, yeah. uh, you know, sentences, separated verbs, case endings? How do you deal with these issues? What do you tell people? Well, I mean, most of the really scary words that they see, for example, this Donau, Dampfschiff, Gesellschaft, Kapitän, this really long one, right. most of those, they never get used in actual German everyday language. Right. And so people don't need to be scared. Um, for example, when people are scared of der, die, das, I right. always tell them, oh, just learn the articles with the word. Right. That makes it a lot easier. Okay. And I don't, I don't know. There's... I think people make it out scarier, uh, to be scarier than it actually is, in my mind, sometimes. Um, many tell me that once they start mm -hmm. learning the language, they, they see patterns and they see that it's, well, not as hard as I thought. So, yeah. I, I agree 100%. And, uh, you know, the people scary say, well, German is a, s a subject, object, verb language, S-V-O, and other <laughs> languages, S-O-V. Like, people, the brain figures that out very quickly. Uh, even the lengthy, can be lengthy, lots of, you know, subordinate clause type sentences. The brain gets used to it. The brain will get used mm. to it with enough listening and reading. Without lengthy, complicated explanations, it, you start to get used to this pattern. And in fact, I find it very enjoyable, as with every language. So I think the secret there, as you say, is as to, to kind of summarize, if you are motivated enough to expose yourself enough to the language, the brain is going to start noticing these patterns. A little bit of explanation might help, but ultimately the brain will kind of sort things out. That's been my experience. Oh, I, I agree, definitely. So, um, yeah, an advice for all your viewers. Don't be scared. Just start learning and you will see that it's not as scary. Okay. Thank you. So, you're a motivator. Uh, People no should problem. go to your, I'll leave a link to your YouTube channel. Uh, oh, thank you. And, thank you. Uh, you know, get people motivated and you provide you know, hints to them on how to overcome any difficulties they have in German. And uh, hopefully we will increase the number of people uh, learning German. So thank you very well, much let's hope so. <laughs> for the interview. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dominic. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Tschüss. Tschüss.